Oh. Now, our job as parents is to embarrass the hell out of her. So what do we have here, babe? What happened? Ah, staying warm. Their outdoor wood boiler. Woo! Three three wheelers and a little four wheeler. Haha, <laughs> that's gonna be all. Awesome. Just when you think you can't get any sexier, I tell you. Awesome stuff. Have a great day, everyone. Oh man. Well, it's 40 degrees out here today. We have to fire up our outdoor wood boiler for the first time this year. We haven't done it yet. Kind of putting it off as long as we can. And really, we made it into uh, October, which is rather rare around here. So, let me show you how we do that here. This outdoor wood boiler, oh my God, built this thing in 2004. So if you want to know about that, here's a video here. You can check out a couple different ones on this, how it works. Uh, one thing while I have this open, everybody always asks me about the pipes that I have in here and you never get to see them because there's usually ashes and fire in here. So these are the pipes that are inside my boiler. Hook them up so they run to the other side and it adds another layer of heating where the coals just sit in here and smolder and it takes the extra heat out of that and uses it. So there was your chance to see those. Now let's get this thing going because it's kind of cold out here and I don't want to be here anymore. So first thing we're going to do take all the stuff that you know you don't want they send you to the mail and this and that and boxes and whatever just throw it in there like you know diapers and cereal boxes and little bits of you know. and what else do we have here fast food package just toss that stuff in there hang on so once you put a bunch of your paper products in here for example you know, soda boxes and just just a little bit of everything. We kind of save this instead of throwing it in the garbage because it takes up a lot of room in the garbage. And uh, it burns and we get free heat out of it. Next thing you want to do is get yourself one of these, a propane torch. I use map gas because I use this for other stuff as well. Don't waste your time trying to light this with a lighter and build a little fire and blah, blah, blah. All you got to do is hit that sucker with the torch. Get it going like that and walk away. That's it. You just leave that. And you close this door. That's it. That sucker will get up and get going. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some sticks and stuff in there and actually build a little fire. On top of that, I have a bunch of debris around here to get it going. And you want to utilize the heat coming off that. But that'll start warming up the boiler. It'll dry it out a little bit. And uh, it'll take a second. You can see it's still burning down there. But it does kind of work better if you close this because it creates the draft more. You can see the smoke coming out here. I don't want smoke coming out here. I want the smoke to come out the top of that chimney. By closing that, it pulls the draft and it will get it going a little quicker. So in the meantime, let me get some sticks and twigs together and throw some of those in here and all of a sudden that'll fire up better. Okay, well, here's some various sticks and twigs. This is like five feet long, perhaps throw it in there. Nice big boiler, big door. Uh, I have a basket and some other junk. You know, like, get rid of this. Okay, throw that in there. Uh, what else? Got a couple of these littler sticks or whatever. Just throw them in. And she's going. I mean, I can tell you this fire is already going and poof. blown out the top awesome man can't believe we're gonna go on another year this thing and she doesn't look the prettiest now and like I said it's been quite a long time that smoke will subside as soon as this gets a little better draft to it and you gotta love it you throw more wood in that There we go, that's what we wanted. Get that sucker really cooking. Look, that took like a minute. Granted, we're burning cardboard and other stuff, but. I'll tell you what, that chimney doesn't seem to be pulling as much as it should be. I wonder. I wonder if this is clogged up. Could be something in there. Something? I'd say there's something in there. Holy moly, where did all this crud come from? 
There's my problem. I better clean this out quick. Now that's how it's supposed to be drafting. Much better now. Got rid of that crud that was in the base of that thing. Got her burning. I mean, I haven't done anything to this in oh, half an hour or so. It's just sitting here and wood is all lit. Paper's all gone. Good to go. And she's nice and warm. So now we built a little bit of heat in here. We're going to take, click on our circulator pumps, get this running, circulate the water through the house, heat up our floor. We have radiant floor heating through here. Um, I'll put up a link here. You can check out how that system works there as well. This thing is awesome, especially this time of the year. This thing is great around this time of the year. You know, you're building a few fires. It, it'll run for a couple hours and then you let the fire go out and it'll stay hot for a few days because it's not that cold outside yet. So, you know, you end up burning through a bunch of cardboard boxes and if you're lighting a bunch of fires, you don't want to be messing with it. Just get the torch, hit it quick and walk away. You'll really love that if it's raining or cold and you just don't have time. You, know, you don't have time for that. You want to just load it and go. Big perk, having that little thing. So I have a feeling this winter, wood is gonna be a kind of a high demand based on the price of everything else skyrocketing. So oil and propane are gonna be high. Wood is gonna be your best option for heating. If you're looking to save a buck and you have the ability to do it yourself, do you wanna get one of these things? Outdoor wood boilers, man, they're great. But... Here's another video I have that I did 20 things about these that's kind of sums up a lot of the truths and myths about outdoor wood boilers. Are they worth it? Should you get one? Should you make one? I say if you can make one, definitely make one. But, uh, well, God, what else could I say? I could go on and on and on and on about this thing. It's just great. This one has no electricity to it. It's not a power vented unit. I have draft control right here by this. This right here just controls my draft if I need more or less air to it. And where you build the fire in this particular box determines how much heat you really get out of it. If I build it more toward this side where all the plumbing comes through, I have the water coming in the top, trickles and circulates through the whole box and then comes out through this bottom corner here. So if I have like all the coals and fire really on that bottom corner, that sucker will get real hot. You know, like I said, down in this area. Really, really hot right before it goes into the house. Cool, cool thing. Well, I'm gonna go in and warm up, I suppose. You know, whew, we lucked out this year. It's almost did kinda mid-October and we didn't even really need to get heat yet. So I'm sure we're gonna pay for that later by freezing all winter long, and burning through our wood supply. So that's the next thing I have to do is go cut a ton of firewood because we burn like half the forest down every winter running this thing. It's great and uh, you know, it works. I like it for a while. She got the fire all going good. We're making heat. I got to go turn the circulators on. I got to make sure this thing is all good and full of water. Should be. Okay, well, one of the major improvements we've been making around here are these panels here. These are aluminum plates. They're three feet long, four feet long, something like that. And they go over your tubes. Now, if you could see with those tubes up there, for the radiant floor heat, we have them held together with these clips screwed to the ceiling. And it works, it holds it up there, but we're not getting as much heat as we want. So, you see, by running those panels on there, that puts the heat right to the floor, and then we'll re-insulate over top of all that. Major difference. We did the other half of the house last winter, and now moving to this side. So those improvements will make a big difference this winter. The other thing that we need to do here is, well, okay, here's our heating system. Basically, we have a propane hot water heater or propane water heater, however you want to say it. And I ran the system to heat the house originally 20 years ago off of just that. And it, was, it wasn't cheap, but it worked. So it just circulates the water through the floor upstairs, through the floor, through the concrete, heats it up and back through again. Pretty simple system. So what we're going to do, because I'm not here so much, I have a line coming in. This comes from the outside, from the wood boiler, then into the tank. Heats it up and out, and then goes back out to the wood boiler. So we're going to separate that system. And what we're going to do is we're going to put in this thing. Now this is a water-to-water -water heat exchanger. 
So water goes in one side, goes through here, and comes back out this side. And then it stays completely separate from the water that comes in this side and back through. So what that means is I can isolate the boiler and I can run antifreeze in the boiler and I can shut the boiler down and it won't matter because it's not circulating heat. But then this side could still be running and circulating heat and I'm not losing heat to do that. So when I come here, I can fire the boiler up and make free heat with the wood and for however many hours I can run that. As soon as it dies down, this system will pick up the slack. And I can easily transfer the heat from one to the other with this. Pretty cool. This is a Series 40, I believe. Anyway, these stupid little copper parts, they're the worst. It was like a hundred and some dollars just for this little box of magic here. That's the worst thing about copper. Other problem. So, that's the heat exchanger. But what we're going to do is because of propane, and it's so like volatile with pricing and who knows what's going on in the world these days, not to mention I live at the top of a mountain with a driveway that's down at the bottom of a crooked hill. So it's a little tricky to get some gas trucks down here in the wintertime. I have a small tank because I didn't use that much propane. They didn't. They took my other one because I always ran the wood boiler. So this year I said, okay, let's make an improvement or at least a change. I picked up this 50-gallon electric water heater, and I ran a new line for this. So this is now going to be tied in with the whole system. So the water is going to come, the boiler, let's see, if I put this exchanger up here as an example, in and out here will just be for the boiler. In here, out here, will then go into the cold side of this, out the hot side, into the cold side of this water heater, and then out the hot side through the whole system, and then come back through into this. Now, the reason for doing that, why am I going to run an electric and a propane water heater? Well, I'm going to set this at a magic temperature, which I believe I still have written on my board here from, oh my God, forever ago. Right here, this, this board. These are the dimensions of my boiler. I built this like 18 years ago, and it's still written on here. It was coming in at 86, out at 105, in at 114. So I need to be hovering right around, you know, 115 or so would be an ideal temperature. So if I have this set at 115 and I have this set at like 113, if this can't keep up, then the propane fires up on those really cold mornings or days and we burn a minimal amount of propane and then we can do it with electricity instead. Uh, if the power goes out, I can still run it off the propane, just need to run a little power to this and that's minor, a generator can handle that, a small circulator pump, so it's minimal power to run that. It's kind of cool there. The other thing I'm doing is I'm getting one of those fancy dancy uh, smart thermostats. So it'll be hooked to the Wi-Fi, I can control it, and then I can go on my phone and I can see, okay, the temperature of the house is 70 degrees. Or I can get a warning, hey, the temperature of the house is dropping, why? And then deal with it from there. Maybe I need to lower the temperature to 50 because nobody's here, and then crank it up because somebody's coming. Cool, I can just do that on my phone. I don't have to be here. That is gonna make all the difference with this system. So I'm kind of disappointed that I'm losing some of the boiler but I'm still going to use it because I want to tie into it. And man, if it runs all the time, this thing would be great. can also tie in to add another spot for domestic water off of that. And that's what this one runs, just domestic. All right, well, that's kind of a run through of what this is. Now I have a ton of work to do because I have to cut into this and hack and tear and make it pretty and make it work. So let's get to work before it gets cold out. Okay, well, it's all done. And that really wasn't too bad of a project here. Got to play with some copper. I don't get to do that too often anymore. I was able to reuse this whole stem, which was surprising. And this feed here, so I didn't need to buy any of these reducers because all these stupid pieces are like 15 bucks a pop now. So kind of crazy when you really think how expensive copper is. Got a good deal on this. This is our water, water heat exchanger. So let me give you an example of a run through how this works. Okay, we are coming in right here, one inch pipe from the boiler. Now this is the supply line, adding power to it, running it over into our heat exchanger, back out and down and back to the boiler. Now amidst that, there's this pipe right here and I'm able to add more water. That is, this supply runs through here. I just turn this valve and open this one, and more water is able to flow through there. 
Actually, I have this open all the... Uh, no, this is closed now. Okay, so that adds more if I open this and this. Now, I lucked out because I was able to just cut this the way I had this connected and tie into it. So it works. It's very simple there, even though it looks really confusing. Now, if we go and start at the heat exchanger, we get hot here, come out of this, go into the electric water heater, out of that, into the propane. Now, if the temperature doesn't take up what I need from this, then this kicks on. So this is kind of like the backup, or if, you know, all of a sudden propane prices drop, then we'll fire this up and run this more often. Needless to say, it comes into this tank, out of this tank, and then through the floor up, and then through the floor below. And it comes back through these tubes into here, into our circulator pump. Now, this is a new circulator pump. The other one burned out on me. I kind of, it was making a bunch of funky noise last year, and when I fired the system up, it wasn't coming on. So... Change that pump out, no big deal. And from there, we come in through here and back up into this heat exchanger. So when we come from this pump through here, I'm able to add water yet again if I need to from here by closing this valve. This valve stays closed, and I can add water to the system through here if I need to. I shouldn't really need to because it's a complete closed loop right now. So that's something... It was different when I had it tied to the boiler, and the system was open on that end. And so it's an open system on the outside with the boiler, and then a closed system on the inside. Simple enough. That's kind of good. It's going to keep the water from absorbing any oxygen and causing more corrosion on the internal system. Neither, but like I said, I can add more water if I need to either way just by opening this valve, and that's an awesome, simple way to tie in with that. Again, if I need to add water to just the outside one, I make sure this valve is shut. It's pretty simple. So, now uh, we're into September. Everything's hooked in, tied in, ready to go. I'm uh, ready to fire up the boiler coming up. I'll put a video right here of firing the boiler up and getting that ready to go and making heat for the system to see how it all works. If one other thing I want to do is tying the thermostat wire in for the... Uh, Wi-Fi thermostat. That, I think, is going to be a big deal with this system. So I hope you like where this has gone. I hope this helped you out. Uh, it was pretty easy to tie it together and make it work, even though it's just a maze of plumbing. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask them. Uh, put up another video of this system running as well before, the way I had it. Pretty slick. And I'm kind of excited now that I can burn wood, I can run it on electric or propane, and all based on how often I'm here or not here, and I shouldn't have to worry anymore. Now, the other thing I did do, I wanted to run this piece here so I could add antifreeze to the system if I need to. That will add it to the internal system. I don't think I'm going to need any on the internal system because I don't plan on allowing the house to cool down enough that it can run on that, or that it could freeze, I should say. I don't want to let anything freeze here. However, the boiler... The boiler may freeze, and I don't know. I may run a little bit of a pump to kick on every once in a while just to keep water moving through it because I don't really want to run antifreeze. If I do run antifreeze, I don't want to run much because this stuff is outrageously expensive right now. So I'm kind of torn. What do I do? Heat the boiler a little, make sure it stays burning, come up with another solution. So that's where I'm currently at. And if I need to add antifreeze to that, I can add it out at the boiler. I have a overflow check valve out there that I can easily feed into and put antifreeze into that. Well, I gotta say, it's a huge relief having this done. I mean, you know, it's heating systems, fun stuff to have to deal with. Works pretty well. I lucked out. Uh, these propane water heaters had a six-year warranty on them. This one is from 2000 or 2001. Same with this one. So we're 22 years in on a six-year warrantied water heater. So there you go. Hopefully they keep on trucking, especially these power vent ones because they're not cheap to buy. And oh, Come on, give me another season out of them. Just one. Cool. All right, well, back to the ceiling. I got a bunch of stuff to keep doing so I can put up the insulation. You can see I got a couple of those ribs in there. I need more to do and finish this whole thing up. But fun continues. Make sure you like and subscribe. Mr. Brian's Amazing World, you have a great day.